In today's video, we're gonna check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. How is it? It's like, hey guys, yes, what does it look like? Like it. Actually, I don't know. God, I can't even see it. What the hell is wrong with No, it's, it's straight up and down. No, no, it has something on the side, Robert. We gotta get a picture. Oh. Uh, yeah? Uh oh, Iron Man, sorry. What is that? Super frustration. All my people. Might be the super people, Maldakian. It's holding its position straight up and down. It's one straight up and down and staying that way. You see it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You all know when you guys see them. It's like a. This looks like a person with his arm sticking out. See it, John? No, I don't see it at all. Oh, there it is. To the left. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? Did you turn it somewhere? Right over here. Look at John and Angela. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god, give my left I'm looking. Oh, there it is. I got it. The Michelin man? I don't know, it looks like a person almost. Yeah, it looks like a person almost. Yeah, exactly. It looks like a person. Yeah. Is it moving? Yeah. It appears like a person, but it's, it's an, an anomaly. It looks like the marshmallow man, but like with a Oh, well, no, you're low, you're low. You just got it? Yeah, like, like you had it. Yeah, you have your iPad? No, you're low. Oh, I can't believe I lost that. It's one, I think, it might be the super beans. I've seen this video floating around on TikTok for the past day or so, and also I've I've seen a similar video to this one a couple months ago. But I don't know what that could be. Everyone's reaction seems to be very genuine. They're all trying to specify what it is, what it looks like. It seems very authentic. At first, I was like, eh, maybe it's just a reflection on a window or something and someone's just playing a trick. But hearing all of the dialogue going on in the background, it just makes it seem very authentic as far as there's an anomaly up there and they're just trying to figure out what it is. And it does look kind of like an astronaut with its arms sticking out and spinning in a circle, but I, I really don't know. And I'm and I'm pretty confused as to whether this is real or fake because the the reactions are super genuine. If you guys have any idea, let me know in the comments down below. This girl is 500 years old and could be coming back to life. You are not going to believe this, but it is 100% true. So this girl right here died 500 years ago. Now she was actually found back in 1999 at the top of the Lulacano volcano. Bit scary when you find that. Now, of course, ever since then, she has been preserved by scientists who have monitored everything about her to keep her intact, I don't know the words, but apparently she still has some on most of her organs and blood. Now, there's two parts to this, and the second one is the craziest part. First of all, how the hell was she preserved? How was she found and still looked like she was alive? Well, she was found basically fully frozen, meaning that she basically got cryogenically frozen for free, which of course means that all of her organs and everything would still be intact when they found her, and it's crazy because she literally looks like she's still alive or died like a week ago when she died 500 years ago, which is mental. Basically, scientists have said that she could wake up at any moment. But yeah, technically, she does still have her organs. There is some blood in her and they are still running tests on her and she is preserved in this place. So one day later down the line, if we do get technology to bring all these, you know, cryogenically frozen people back, then maybe we could bring her back. Who are these scientists? Like, what's going on? But anyway, hit that follow button. And I'll keep you updated if she, you know, 
I am curious as to how are they studying this frozen person? Are they just doing experiments on the frozen body or are they just harvesting the frozen body, expecting it to come alive any moment as soon as our technology is there to bring that person back? I'm curious as to why they think it's going to come back or maybe that was just this individual just blowing it out of proportion. Nonetheless, though, very interesting. And if they ever do bring them back, I would be extremely fascinated to hear about their past because they probably have some stories to tell. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to the people that are subscribed, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. And to the people that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of questions for DK, where I answer personal questions, conspiracy theories, or theories in general, leave a comment starting with question for DK so that I can answer those questions in a future video. This machine here is my microwave pyrolysis reactor. It uses microwave heating to turn plastic waste into gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, natural gas, and solid carbon. This is the first ever oil birthed from this Mark 4.5 plastic into fuel reactor. But let's see, is this oil from plastic waste really fuel? Come with me. Let's see if it burns. Oh, I guess so. This is a mix of gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel here. So this is essentially crude oil made from plastic waste. This needs to be further refined to get out the specific fractions we want just the gasoline just the diesel just the jet fuel but we can tell by how this barely lights you could drop a, a match on fire inside of diesel fuel and it will not light so we can tell by that that this fuel that we got is mostly diesel here it's good to see this person back on tiktok i was a little concerned for them for a little while there they were they were making videos about that generator or that reactor on making all these different types of fuels and they kind of just disappeared for a while but it looks like they're they're coming back and i find it extremely interesting i just don't know if i necessarily believe it or if even if it is real how efficient is it like how much plastic are we really recycling to get just that small little container of fuel once I get those questions, that'll be a little bit better, but right now it's not looking that efficient. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that this is like a revolutionary mechanism that's creating fuels out of plastic, or do you think that this might just be some wacky experiment going on in someone's backyard? I'm not gonna lie, if I had free time, I'd probably do some crazy things like that as well. Froze his body voluntarily to revive in 2017. How is that man doing now? That man is James Hiram Bedford a psychology professor at the University of California and a former soldier in World War I. Previously, James came across the idea in the book The Prospect of Immortality, so he intended to cryogenically freeze his body for revival in the future when science advanced. On January 12, 1967, James ceased to have a heartbeat in a nursing home at the age of 73, Dr. Renault Abel performed artificial respiration and chest compressions to maintain blood circulation in his body. Subsequently, all of his blood was drawn and dimethyl sulfoxide was injected to protect his organs. Finally, they placed James in a container of liquid nitrogen at a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. According to his wish, he wanted to be revived in 2017, but it is now 2024. And with current science, he still remains frozen in cryogenic storage. I've been asked if I would do something similar if, or if I approve of this type of thing. I don't disapprove. I, I, I say go for it if this is your thing. It's definitely not for me, I don't think. I, I, I'm more or less happy where I'm at and I'm just going to take it where it goes because I don't want to be frozen. Now, if my family decided to say, hey, I want to freeze because things are really looking bad and maybe we'll have a better future, I might consider it, but I'd still be like, I, I, I don't know, it'd be a tough call. How about any of you? Are you down to do any cryo freezing and get revived in the future, or are you just going to stick to your natural timeline? <laughs> Tin foil half fact of the day. Did you know that the majority of your internet comes from a cable 
underneath the ocean and not a satellite in the sky. Nope. Do research. 99%. 99%. Oh, that was a quick fact. I know it seems a little silly for the people that know this already. There's apparently a lot of people that do not know where the internet comes from, and they do think that it comes from satellites and things like that not knowing that we actually have some different cables traveling across the ocean from country to country. So the more you know. That thing was monstrous. Imagine seeing that just poking out of your ceiling or something. You know, you're just sleeping at night. Next thing you know, you're hearing something in the attic and you look up and there's a hand poking down at you from the ceiling. That would be nightmare fuel. That needs to go away. I'm pretty certain that's a raccoon hand and that thing is a big raccoon if that's the case. Someone needs to come and get that out of their house. A man is being charged with felony peeping after filming up women's skirts at a Target in Greenville, North Carolina. This is honestly the best way to handle men like this. The guy Thomas Elliott had been following the woman filming around Target and she got suspicious so decided to film him. Excuse me, what are you doing? No, I just saw you put that underneath her dress. Absolutely you did. You absolutely did. Then show me your phone. And you were following me over in the children's section. Because I have a sister who's pregnant. Ma'am, I really wasn't. I was just trying to look at the books. No, you weren't. That's all I was trying to I do. I have it on video. You are not going to get away with anything. Ma'am, I'm really... I'm you not... can say ma'am all you want, but we will let them decide. I'm, I really promise I wasn't no. trying to do anything inappropriate. Uh-uh. I wasn't. I really wasn't. I'm not like that. Uh, obviously you are. I literally have it on video. Shout out to this woman, Audra Murray, your true girl's girl, and thank you for trusting your gut and following him around and filming him to catch him doing this so that he actually has to be accountable for his actions now. This whole situation is especially concerning because Elliot was a volunteer at Greenville Elementary and also an ex-employee at Open Door Church. So next time a man stalks or harasses you or another woman, let's normalize following them back and catching them in the act so they have to now be accountable for their actions. I'm glad that lady actually took note and watched this guy because he sound extremely innocent. Like he sounds extremely innocent. You could tell he was shaking though. Like if you looked at his pants and everything, he was like really shaking a lot. So you could tell he was nervous, but his voice and how he was like trying to sound innocent, he sounded pretty innocent. And he was definitely using his phone to look up that lady's dress. There's no getting out of that. Like you got got, sir. You need to just go ahead and Put your head down in shame and because you're going to jail. Let's be on the lookout out there because there's some really weird people. Speaking of alien technology. <laughs> yes. Do you see that video of those 10 foot creatures in Brazil that was actually caught on video? I yes. did see those. Dude, Wild. Look at this, Lil. <gasps> there's like one where it's like walking down the mountain. They look really tall. But then there is one in Mexico as well. Look at that thing. Oh, it looks similar. The and thing. it's huge. There's a lot of things happening in different places all the way across the world. You can't coordinate that. This one was in Canada. It looks just like the one in California. Yeah. Right? That one's weird, dude. And then a couple of them in Chicago. Oh, those are weird. And then watch them zoom off. Golly, dude. These things are moving fast. You need to check out the one that happened in Mexico. And it's oh, this literally this Mexico? thing flying down the road, what just like the gliding. Crap? And it's changing colors. It's wacky, man. And that like that's like really good footage. It's just like signs. I'm going to go buy a drone and hang little dangly prisms off it and just start flying it around your house one night. If it is military stuff, we have the right to know what's flying in our airspace. I mean, I feel like we should like know like if we can see it, it's visible to the human eye. You should be able to like communicate. I mean, those ones that look kind of like giants, they looked like normal people. There was no scale of reference for me other than that one sitting on top of the, the, the hill and by the tree that individual did look pretty large and as far as the ufos to me a lot of those look like clusters of balloons just floating around i i could be completely wrong but a lot of those look like clusters of balloons to me what do you guys think about these scenarios who shot the footage he's walking out on the moon one giant leap for mankind he had a tv where camera where it was in the as he walked down as he walked down the lamb 
uh, he pulled a handle that deployed what was called a MESA, the Modular Equipment Assembly, Modular Equipment Storage Assembly, Storage Area, whatever it was. And in that was a camera. And so when that came down, they flipped it on, and the camera was pointed right at the at the landing. And so as he came down the ladder, this camera was taking his picture. It's a TV camera. It's grainy, but it was it was in that assembly. Right. And then once we got off, uh, they they took the camera and put it on a, um, a little tripod, if I remember. But Last thing I remember very clearly. I think anybody who was alive at the time does. I remember my parents waking me up, and we went down and we watched you guys land on the moon. No, which you was, didn't. No, you didn't. What? Because uh, uh, there wasn't any television. There wasn't anybody taking a picture. You watched animation. So you associated what you saw with... I have very hazy memories. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, 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 no, what we saw was we all, we all were gathered around heard, the old curved top radio me and listened. talking about, uh, you know, how many feet we were going to the left and right, and then I said, contact light, engine stop. It was and exciting. A few other things, and then Neil said, Houston, Tranquility Base, the Eagle has landed. Man, how about that? That, that was that, very exciting. Not a bad line. I always am very conflicted about these videos because I never know if the Buzz Aldrin videos are true or they're false because he keeps saying that it was all fake. And I don't know if he's necessarily meaning that in regards to the moon landing was actually fake or if what he is saying, the footage that we see is fake footage. And they did actually, they did actually land on the moon, but the footage that they captured is not the moon landing. It's not the real moon landing. It's kind of like a Hollywood portrayal of the moon landing so that it was easier to film and actually more accurate. That's my guess. And I kind of want to believe that in a way. Maybe NASA really did put astronauts on the moon, but they could not necessarily film it due to the difficulty of it so that they came up with a Hollywood set of it just to show us what it was like. That would be interesting, but to claim that it's actual footage is one thing. You could use this as a demonstration of the actual moon landing to help us not think you're lying, but it's not that way. They say that that's the actual moon landing footage. But you know me. I'm not a huge believer in NASA. I, I want to believe, but there's a lot of things that just make me question their authenticity. And most of it is my tax dollar going to fund their business. Earth is one of the most challenging places you can incarnate into. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to resonate that this life experience is very dense and heavy in vibration. Dolores Cannon says that the beings that are not on Earth applaud us for incarnating and taking on this challenge because the laws of this experience are extra challenging. There's duality, light and dark. Plus we forget everything that we know. We forget our connection to source when we incarnate here, which I feel like is why this can be so challenging. But at the same time, it can be the most beneficial experience to us, the most growth. Bashar says that we are here to transform limitation into freedom. So I guess my point is, sometimes we make this life experience way too real and intense because we can feel so much, but really there's nothing to worry about. It's just an illusion that we have to do something or be somewhere. I even have this myself, but I know in my inner being that there's nothing to worry about at all. And lastly, I wanna say that on other planets or other life experiences, I don't think we get to experience emotions and our senses the same so try to be grateful for this experience it's a pretty good concept and it also makes me theorize you know whether there's a god or not a heaven or a hell if there is different realms when we pass when our earthly body is no longer and our spirit or soul is now free from this realm it does make me wonder in that other realm do we have choice? Do we have thought? When we, our physical bodies pass, 
and our spiritual bodies awaken? Do we remember our past lives? Do we retain all of the information that we learned while we were on earth it makes me wonder do we have the choice to go back to earth to maybe gain more knowledge or maybe try to figure out another task to make your afterlife even better because when you pass maybe you're not a hundred percent there might be levels to the afterlife as far as different realms and depending on how much earthly experience you have depends on where you rank in that other realm like if you have a lot of experience maybe a couple few hundred years of experience on earth then that puts you at a high rank in this other realm when you pass and it sounds kind of bizarre but it's a pretty fun theory that just ran through my head let me know what you guys think of it so i don't know a lot about kenneth as far as his history how he sounded on one of the videos that i saved to use on the previous video that i published there was a snippet of him when he was younger the minute they said flesh i don't know why i immediately thought about sex but something about his face now the pure spotless blood of god and hesed was performed for me i don't know all i can say is in my theory i believe that kenneth copeland is one of many tv star priests that are not normal they're not normal people those are definitely entities that are meant to brainwash us and follow a false narrative i'm almost 100 percent sure they are people that are just set to take other people's money and they're using their charisma if you will to gain the attention of people and, and they're just blindsiding those people and and, and just taking their money I'm still in shock that we are all not in a rage ready to fight this freaking government already after all of the shit they've been pulling. This isn't the type of war that is going to be combat. That's not what this is at all. And like everybody's been saying, it's no longer left versus right. It's rich versus poor. Then how do we fight something like this? We have to keep the wealth here. We have to keep it with us. And I know it's easier said than done because money talks. People are still going to go to Dollar Tree. People are still going to go to, you know, Wendy's, McDonald's because it's cheap food. It's affordable. And that's what people need right now. But if you think about the future and what's where that money is actually going, that you're supporting the top 1%. With things like that, it might be harder. But at least with like, if you get coffee every morning before work, go to a local coffee shop instead. And these boycotts we've been doing, like... Good job, everybody. We have to keep those going. This goes beyond Palestine and Israel. Th th we have to take every single corporation down. We have to stop supporting them. Because money talks for them too, right? Not just us. So when they start to see their corporations start crumbling, like they've already been seeing the losses like Starbucks, Kellogg's, we have to create this domino effect, okay? We have to start making this a regular thing. Because if they keep continuing to see that they're losing money, they're going to have to make life better for us. They're going to have to make changes that we want, like health care, affordable living. That's how we win this fight. So everybody, let's fucking do it. I mean, I couldn't agree more. The only problem that I have with this is it will never really truly happen unless we all can rally together and come to an agreement to not support these businesses. They have way too much control in the population and there's too many people that do not care enough to not go out of their way to support a independent. They always have to go to the commercialized franchises because it's easier, like this individual said, even though they're not necessarily cheaper, but they can be cheaper than going to a like a mom pop coffee shop. And it just makes it more difficult for everyone to get under the same page to take down these businesses because everyone has needs and everyone has wants and everyone's limited to what they can get so i don't ever see these corporations going down but i really would like to start seeing them go down in the favor of the people because i don't necessarily want the companies to go down i just want them to do better for the people i want their employees to get paid more and i want the customers to be more satisfied with the outcome but like this lady said it's not going to change unless we do something about it and i just don't think we're going to let me know what you guys think about this let me know if you would be down to make a stand against big corporations because 
I think we definitely need to, but there's not a platform big enough to reach out to everybody in order to make something like this happen, you know? We have 100 families operating behind the scenes controlling 8 billion people. If you understand what's going on on this planet and the control and the boot that's on our neck right now, we have been in complete collusion with that happening to us. We have allowed it to happen because there's no we way eight billion people. We participate. Participation is our collusion. It's our approval to continue to accept what's being done to us. Hmm. And what they've done is something brilliant, divide and conquer. They've got us divided, which has conquered us. They've got the political system, left wing, right wing. You got the races, black, white, red, yellow, green, blue, whatever. You got all these things. You got the different kind of churches. You're Protestant. I'm Catholic. No, I'm Baptist. All this is separation, right? And so with the separation tactics, what's happened is we can't see the smoke that they're blowing up our butt. I always think about how many people are truly operating this whole world. Like all of Earth, there's only a handful of people that are truly operating this whole world, I'm sure. Old families, old bloodlines that just have so much power that we do not know anything about. I really truly believe that. More powerful than the Rockefellers, more powerful than anyone that we know of, they are so powerful that we do not know of them. That's how powerful they are. I'm sure there's people out there like that that exist that rule this world. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.